Hey, yo. Tegelijk. Uh, welcome to Rijke Grapevine Newscast. There have been a dramatic development uh, in the past uh, few days. Uh, I was very optimistic in the last one, but, uh, but I'm not anymore a little bit. And I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, Kaure Stefansson. You know this character? Uh, he was on the, on the first uh, cover uh, of our... Uh, where do you want to go? Here? Let's try it. Uh, he was on the first cover of our web issue. Kari Stevenson is the director and like the mind, the mad scientist behind Decode. Uh, Decode is a company that have been helping us testing because of the COVID-19. They are kind of uh, responsible that we managed to test 16% of the nation. And we're talking about, uh, we have a world record in Iceland right now, which is that we have tested the most of Icelanders when it comes to COVID. And this has also been crucial in the fighting against the decode, against the, against the COVID-19, which means that we are now, it feels like we're winning the, the, in, in this pandemic when it comes to COVID-19. So, here's what happened. Kaurer Stefansson went to the biggest uh, news uh, show in Iceland yesterday called Kastljus. It's at Ruf, our, our national broadcast in Iceland. Uh, there he told uh, that he was very, very unhappy about how the health ministry has been uh, doing, like preparing the opening of the borders. And you remember, we are trying to open the borders at 15th of June. There's a special task force actually working day and night right now, trying to find the best solutions to do this. Most of the vital um, solutions when it comes to this is probably that we are going to test everyone that comes here uh, that wants to, if they do not have a health certificate or uh, do not want to quarantine for two weeks. Uh, but the thing is that uh, to do this, we need a lot of manpower. Uh, for some reason, nobody really talked to Decode about it. So what the health ministry did, they planned this, they say like, this is doable, uh, and uh, we will probably need the help of, of Decode. But when Kaur Estev came yesterday to the, to, to, the, in, to the news, he said like, well, nobody talked to us, and what's worse, and here is the, the absurd element of this, he said like, uh, nobody have thanked us for this. He was like, uh, we can say like he was like a hurt lion almost. And the most interesting thing is that uh, he said uh, that uh, uh, he said that uh, like on the, there was a press meeting on Monday or Tuesday uh, where, the, where the, the government was saying like we are officially like uh, declaring it's not a, murder, a state of emergency anymore in Iceland. And we are winning. It was like a glowing moment for the politicians in Iceland. And uh, among them was Svante Svavarsdóttir, our health minister. Um, a very capable politician, a very capable health minister also. And uh, everybody is on the same page, even Kaori, that she is very good in what she does. Uh, but the thing is that uh, uh, she thanked everyone in a, in a very dramatic speech, except Decode. Uh, he said that this was... Uh, uh, a huge disrespect when it comes to Decode and how much they have a uh, tribute to this pandemic, uh, to fight this pandemic. And he said, yeah. Yeah, what did he say? Uh, and he said that uh, it felt like an, an insult. So he said that uh, uh, if they are not, if they are like, if they will not uh, appreciate what we have done, we have spent, uh, a three billion Icelandic krona without uh, demanding a pay for that, uh, then we are not interested in helping you any further. The reason also they said this is because Decode is, uh, they say we're helping people. Uh, the economy is not our problem. Uh, how you figure that out? That's the government. So uh, when it comes to the pandemic, we're saving the people. So, so it's, uh, we, we can say it's, it's hugely gridlocked right now. Svante uh, Svavarsdóttir, our health minister, she does not want to comment about this interview, which was also very dramatic. Even the man, the, the news reporter that was talk to, talking to Kaur, interviewing him, 
he said actually <laughs> in the interview uh, that he was crazy. Uh, the reason is basically because Kaur said that he would not win with, work with uh, Santis, but if our top epidemiologist Thorolo Gunnarsson would call, he would probably say yes. But he has actually closed down, like blocked his number, so it doesn't reach to Kauri because he said like, well, if you're going to reach me, I'm probably going to say yes, because the guy is brilliant. So this is the absurd situation that we are in right now, that, uh, that the, uh, the pride of some characters in Icelandic society uh, is, is in the way of opening the borders for now. But we're still planning on opening the borders on the 15th of June. But uh, uh, the, the final answer will come in the end of this week. The, the health minister said we're going to open, but we are going to uh, take the, like, the, the, like the final answer will come on Friday. But of course, uh, it's very highly likely that we will do it. The only reason we would not do it is because uh, like if there will be unexpectedly a lot of uh, new cases in Iceland. And the thing is, we have kept our cases uh, from zero to one. We had like six now uh, COVID-19 uh, new cases in, in May, like past three, four weeks. Uh, and a new one came yesterday. Oh. This is Save the Children in Iceland. It's a beautiful memorial. It's about the, the unnamed, unnamed child, like a memorial for it. Icelanders love children, so it's a pretty basic thing. Uh, in other news, uh, 403 people have been laid off at the Blue Lagoon. You know this? This is the most famous uh, tourist uh, stop in Iceland, the Blue Lagoon. Uh, and they are in trouble. Uh, because before the COVID, uh, they were one of the strongest companies in Iceland. But right now, uh, they are with a lot of staff, but they do not see that it would be viable for them to have uh, as many staff as they have right now. So 400 people have been laid off. The company has also been very, uh, they've been very criticized for using the subsidies. Uh, they are one of these strong companies in Iceland of so many companies that have used this government way to pay the salaries through the subsidies. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I, I guess they are like, they are preparing for a heavy summer and even a dark winter. So it doesn't uh, look good. Uh, Blue Lagoon is of course not going burst or anything. They're, they're a very strong company. They will open again everything in 19th of June, only four days after the borders have been opened. Uh, around 900 people are right now in quarantine, uh, which is uh, pretty good. We, we, when we, when like we were over like uh, 10,000 when we were uh, the man, little, when the population was most, I think. I'm not sure <laughs> how do you say it in English. Uh, the government say the economical hit will be severe, uh, and it will take up to five years to get back to zero. So they have, the government has been doing a lot of access. They have been creating jobs for young people. They have been, of course, doing the subsidies, uh, paying like, uh, I think, 75 or 65 percent of the, 85 uh, percent of the salaries of, of, for, for people in uh, companies. And they say that this will be a huge hit and they're going to take a 75 billion Icelandic krona loan. So they're now that's, that's the nice next fight at the parliament, I guess. Uh, and like this is not enough. There is a dog couple divorcing. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw this at greypan.is, but we had a hilarious uh, article at Fretablaðið where they were telling us about the dog couple that are gonna that, that appears to be divorcing after they were uh, always uh, getting bread in front of a, a fast food uh, shop called Hlöllabótar. Uh, we, we actually went there, we took an interview and we, we wrote, read about, wrote about it and you can see even a YouTube video about it. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, this is a dramatic story <laughs> that you have to check out. Uh, you have to also, yeah, a th few things I want to remind you of. There are a lot of people, of course, that have helped us doing the, like, you know, participating in the, in the, in the high five club memberships. 
Uh, we have uh, almost around 360 now. Um, our goal is actually to get up to 1,000. So that would be absolutely beautiful if you could take time, uh, if you like us, to, to support our journalism. If you like this kind of journalism, we are, we are very sincerely doing this as well as we can. Uh, so we need your help, basically. That's, that's the status of things now. If you want to, like, perhaps not pay us, uh, like, support us with a few, few euros every month, you can always just go uh, and buy something. Uh, because we, we don't like charity, uh, we, we, like, uh, we like, like assistance, of course, but we like to give something back, like news, like, like Polly setting a ball in, 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 a, in a newscast. Uh, but you can also just go and buy stuff, like this book here. This is poetry by Andrés Snær Magnason. Uh, he has been on, on, on our cover. He's a very vocal and very uh, like uh, prominent fighter for for uh, for changing global warming that is happening in, on, the, on Earth. And he has written books that have absolutely blown Icelanders, mind, Icelanders away with uh, about these th things. Uh, so also remember greipan.is, where you can find all of this news there, much more detailed and even more accurate. Perhaps I said something wrong here, so, so please check it out. Um, and of course, social media, uh, like us, subscribe for us, uh, and share it if you like it. And yeah, I don't know, should we read one poem more? Love poem from Checkout 2. As long as the sun revolves around itself and the earth revolves around the sun and the moon revolves around the earth, my life will revolve around you. But if the sun stops revolving around itself and the earth around the sun or the moon shoots off into outer space, couldn't we just be friends? <laughs> Thank you, goodbye. Could he?